Hello friends, I'm Pastor Robert Abner and I serve Lutheran Church of the Cross in Muncie, Indiana and Grace Village, the Lutheran Episcopal Presbyterian Campus Ministry at Ball State University. Good to be with you again today as we dive into some daily devotions where we have tackled any number of topics from commemorating the saints on their feast days or days of commemoration, if you will, to uh, answering write-in questions, to discussing parts of scripture, to uh, talking about bigger theological points, and um, talking about parts of the church service or things in the church building, you name it. We've tried to cover a lot of it here uh, as we just spend some time uh, remembering who we are as people who follow Jesus and uh, staying rooted in the word uh, and letting it guide our lives along with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, Sunday during service, uh, as we were beginning the service, we went through the order of confession and forgiveness, and I thought, you know, that would be a, a good topic to cover, because um, folks who did not grow up in the Roman Catholic Church or a mainline Protestant church probably aren't familiar with why we, um, we incorporate that into our service. And so, you know, the Roman Catholic Church has a, a, the practice of individual confession, to where someone goes into a booth and they confess their sins to the priest, and they, they hear words of absolution. Um, whereas in the mainline Protestant traditions, uh, Lutheran, Episcopal, Presbyterian, Methodist, etc., um, it's typically done during the worship service as a corporate act where we, we confess our sins alongside one another, but, but we do it in a way in which we, we confess, um, which you're going to hear. I'm going to read one of our, our confessions here, our orders of confession. But it's done in a way to kind of be a blanket catch-all uh, rather than actually standing there and confessing each of our own individual sins, which could take quite a long time. And we probably would forget some and miss some. And so that's why we have this corporate order of confession and forgiveness so that we can confess the ways in which we have fallen short. You know, when we talk about to sin, uh, sinning uh, means to miss the mark or to fall short. And so when we sin... We fall short in the way that we love God and love our neighbor. We fall short in the way that we serve God and serve our neighbor. So sinning, uh, not a, a thing for a scoreboard to tally up all the ways that you're going to go to hell. No, sinning is a way to be reminded that we fall short in the way that we love and serve both God and our neighbor. And also to be reminded that we are to repent from those ways that we fall short. And repent's a big scary word that you see street preachers holding on big signs and you know it's used to scare people into acting right but really repent just means to turn to turn from that selfish behavior to turn from the things that separate you from god and neighbor and so if you look at repentance as an invitation rather than a threat you're prepared to confess your sins so that you can hear that your sins are forgiven your slate is clean and you can now move forward to try all over again, to try to do your best to hit the mark, to love God, to love your neighbor, and to serve them both. So that's why we have the order of confession and forgiveness. So let's talk about that just a little bit. So we call it corporate confession and forgiveness. And so we all say these words together in unison, and then we hear from the pastor that our sins are forgiven, not because the pastor has forgiven us, but because the pastor is announcing that Jesus has forgiven us because although we know that Christ died and forgave our sins, it doesn't hurt to be reminded because we never can hear enough how much God loves us and forgives us. So we have two main ones in the ELCA. Now granted we have lots and lots that we use, but there are two main ones that are in our main settings in our book, Evangelical Lutheran Worship. And so we begin by saying, Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We are just sinful by nature, being born, you know, uh, of original sin, as we like to say, these sins that were given to us uh, from the very beginning. Uh, we are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. So we come to God saying, God, we can't get it right without you, so please help us to get it right. And then we confess that we have sinned against you, talking about God, in thought, word, and deed. 
We have sinned against God with our thoughts. We have sinned against God with our words. And we have sinned against God with our actions. And Lord, help me to find a week that I don't do that. And we've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, but also what we have left undone, which I think is important to remember. We have, we have sinned against God in the things that we have done, which were transgressions against our neighbor. But we've also sinned against God when we have failed to do what God has called us to do, when we have failed to act with love and compassion towards one another, when we have failed to speak up against injustice and oppression. These are ways that we fail God and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We go on. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. So we have failed to love God with our whole heart because we have turned to other things and made them gods. We have turned to other things and made them idols, whether it's uh, our, you know, some of our bad habits that separate us from God or whether it's um, the ways that we have created and made new idols out of greed and money and things like that. So uh, we have not loved God with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, which was the command given to us by Jesus. Now we appeal, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. We appeal to our great intercessor, Jesus the Christ. Forgive us, okay? Now renew us, right? So not only just forgive us, but renew us. Send that Holy Spirit to cultivate new life inside of us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. So that when we say, your kingdom come, your will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that we mean it, that we find delight in God's will, that we want to walk in God's ways, just like we pray every time we say the Lord's Prayer. So that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, so that we may give glory to God's name in all that we do. Amen. It's tricky because much like the rest of the liturgy, it's, it's easy to find ourselves going through the motions. And so that's why I like to break down things like this so that we know why we are saying these things and the great enormity of the depth from which we say them. And so uh, I, want, I share this because I want you to think about these things next time you're in the worship service, next time you are confessing your sins and you... Um, Give thought to that rather than just saying the words, rather than just reading it off the paper. Um, I will, I'll save the other one. We'll, we'll do that another day. Um, and so now, hear the words of forgiveness. Again, I as a pastor am not forgiving you, which I do forgive you. Thank you. God bless you. Um, but what I am now, what I'm doing is announcing to you to remind you that Jesus has forgiven you. So I'm proclaiming, I am announcing the forgiveness of sins. I am not the one who has done the forgiving, right? God who is rich in mercy. It's important to remember. We hear over and over again. You think of the Old Testament and people always think it's this mean, judgy, vengeful God. But over and over again through the Old Testament, we hear that God is uh, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, right? Slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. So, let's see. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to... Yeah, okay, same thing. You get it. Uh, we sing that during Lent a lot. Um, so, God who is rich in mercy, which God is, loved us even when we were dead in sin. Right? So, we weren't perfect when Jesus came to the earth. We weren't perfect when God became flesh. No, we were dead in sin. So God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. And through our theology in the Lutheran church, and probably in most of your churches as well, we find that we are alive together with Christ through the waters of baptism. And so that's where we see the waters of baptism as a sacrament because God is alive and active in the water. Jesus himself being baptized in the water, we too are made alive together with Christ through baptism. We have died through sin because of Adam, but Christ is the new Adam, and through that we find new life. We are dead to the old sin, 
alive and new life together with Christ. Big concepts you probably hadn't even thought of, right? So, as I am announcing this to folks, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Not by your works, not by your beliefs, not by your good attitude, not by, you know, uh, all the things you did right. No, by the grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been saved, and you are being saved, and you will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, here's where I make the sign. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Not in the name of Pastor Robert, not in the name of Lutheran Church of the Cross, not in the name of the Pope, no. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. And may Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit. Remember we talked about the Holy Spirit a while back? We can do nothing aside from the Holy Spirit. Those good works, all that we do for the glory of God, comes through the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. So may Almighty God strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith so that we may become like little Christs. Amen. Thanks for tuning in this week, friends, uh, as we talked about the order of confession and forgiveness and really think about those words when you are saying them in church and think about what the pastor is saying to you when he announces that Christ has forgiven you. This is a big deal. This is, this is central to our faith. So please take those words to heart. Break the monotony. Don't feel like you're just going through the motion because you are confessing the ways in which you fall short and acknowledging that and acknowledging that. Acknowledging you have a problem is the, is the best, surest way to help you get over that problem and then can, and can hearing in the words of the forgiveness that Jesus forgives you. You are not bound to sin any longer. You are not indebted to God through sin because Christ has paid the bill. Your sins are are forgiven. Be free, repent, and go do the work that God created you for. Do the good things that God created you for as you are a vessel of the Holy Spirit. My friends, take care of yourselves, wear your mask, wash your hands, and may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. Amen.